Hello, this is a video about the SRAM NX Eagle 12 speed group set. In my last video, I explained that the shifting was having problems, and I found out after testing the bike yesterday that where the main issue was, it was that this rear derailleur hanger was bent. As you look at it, you can't really see that it's bent. It's very hard to see. However, it is bent. You don't look it, but it is bent. So what happened was, I think I know what happened. When I was going through the door, the door's got one of those, um, the tension springs to it, what makes sure the door closes. So what happened, when it hit the red railer, my Shimano Atlas, what I was running at the time, it bent it slightly, a little bit inwards. So if it was somewhere here, slightly bit went this way inwards. So the actual, every time I was changing the gears, you would hear the chain scrape onto the next chain ring. That's only because this was slightly bent inwards that was causing the gearing. Coming out was just fine. So after changing it, I realized that the problem's been solved. The gearing's been silent. It's been crisp. And I have no complaints at the moment. The only thing is, I can say about these, I rather preferred if this was made at a steel or they gave you like a steel option. I rather the extra weight. I know I got that better durability. The only thing about this is that, yes, it's light. We can feel that it's not really as strong. It can easily get bent if you're not careful. So, if they could one day, I would prefer them if they made something kind of still. Because on my last bike, my my um rear derailleur hanger was made as still, and I rode that bike for eleven years, ten months. And that bike has hit the derailleur so much times, I can't even count how many times it hit. But the gears always worked. And that thing never ever got bent once. So, with these aluminium or these alloy um, rear derailleur hangers, you have to be careful of. Because one hit, especially when you're on a 12-speed, the change is narrower. The cat set some more closer. You just don't want to end up with a um bent um red railer hanger. So as far as I'm concerned, the gearing's been working and I'm really happy with it. All the gears work. There's no rub. It all goes up. It goes down when it's meant to. You see, before, if you can see, if I try to um, go down from the low gear into the higher gear, what would happen on the low gear, it, would, it wouldn't drop because the actual hanger this was bent. So it would always stay on the 50th tooth. Now, if I shift gear, you can see. It drops down, it goes up, it drops down, it goes up, it drops down. Yeah, so I set the gears and I love the way how they work. So as far as I'm concerned, 
and they work really well. These on the NX don't use silk cartridge bearings. They're just using those two caps and that metal um, um, bar thing what goes in the center. It's not using the silk cartridge bearings. However, if I get the silk cartridge bearings for these jockeys, the top one's 14 tooth, the bottom's 12 tooth. If I get the silk cartridge one, it gives it more of that better stability so you don't have none of that little flex or little turn in it. So that I can always do. I can always buy that in due time. However, compared to this red trailer hanger to that red trailer hanger, there's a big improvement what's happened. So I realized that the number one culprit was, is this. So if you're suffering from your gearing and you put on a new derailleur and you still got that same issue, the chances are very high that your rear derailleur hanger is bent. So when I bought my bike, the first thing I always made sure was, can I replace my rear derailleur hanger that's the first thing i looked at when i bought this bike and i was like yes i can so it's a good thing i did my research or i would have had myself a problem second if you buy a bike what is um 135 millimeter what is known as O dot L dot D, what means overlock nut dimension. It's talking about from nut to nut, from this side to the other side. So when you see the word O L D, it means overlock nut dimension. So this one here is 135. However, in the market, if you're looking for wheels that that can fit this bike you got the nuke proof neutron v2s that will work you just have to buy the um 135mm crew cleese adapters like i have here at the back and also got the front wheel so if i pick up the camera you will see this part here you can see is quick release it's 135 at the back if I come over to the front, you'll see that I also have quick release at the front. So, and I'm using the hook quick release at the same time. So, the front end is 100mm and it's on quick release. And... The back is 135 quick release. If you're gonna buy a specialized um, um, rock hopper, the number one thing you have to keep in mind is this bike runs on the old specification. So if you were looking to have wheels, you're gonna be very limited on wheels so the only board you're going to get is the Nuke Proof Neutron V2s, Neutron Horizon V2s, what's a far better wheel set to this. You will have yourself the Hope Fortress 23 that runs on the Hope Pro 4 hubs. You will have the Fortress, you have the Fortress 26 by Hope. That also runs on the Hope Pro 4 hubs. You have um, the Mavic Cross Rides. They're like the Mavic's entry level. But you have to be very careful with your wheels. Because they're very easy to come out of tune if you are going to do a jump. And you land at a certain angle. You could really damage those wheels easy. Um, they recently released the 
new Mavic Cross Max, that's affordable wall set, and the only thing you need to be able to get, it's the quick release, with the adapters, and they use the, the QRM Auto adapters, what supports it, then you have to buy the rare adapters to convert it to 135 mil. So you have to keep that in mind. However, at the moment, it's very hard to get the quick release at the front with the adapters to go from 15 mil to 9 mil, and it's very hard to get the one at the back, what is 12 mil to 15 mil, the mountain back adapters that you need. So if you're gonna buy a Crossmax, just make sure you know that you can get hold of the adapters first. Also, if you're the type of person who's got money to spend, then I recommend you the company called Industry 9 because they have 11 wheels that will go on the bike, but you're looking to spend at least around, let's say, over £680 upwards. You're going from at least 680 up into like 1000 something. So when you're going industry 9, you're paying for high quality wheels, but you'll be paying that heavy price tag if you don't mind paying it, if you're going to run it on a bike like this. So when you're buying these type of bikes, remember you're running an old specification. So certain things are going to be very limited and, and hard to get. So make sure... When you're buying these bikes at 135, do your research, make sure that you can get these wheels work fits 135. Make sure when you're buying your wheels that they sell the adapters for if you're running 135. When it comes to the 12 speed gearing, you can put on the Shramanex Eagle that you see here. What comes with a dub bottom bracket as you can see over there. Right? These pedals, if you want to know what these pedals are, they're the Crank Brothers stamp on pedals. Now, the only reason why I was able to get this group set, because this runs on the normal Shimano Hyperglide body. So this is just the normal Hyperglide. So, when you're putting this on, it works with normal mountain bikes what don't use the SRAM XD drive or the Shimano microspline if you use a normal Shimano bottom bracket driver body or the drive shell body this is what you need because some people call it drive shell some people call it the drive body there's many names what people can call it but it's all talk about the same thing now, with this bike, you're going to be limited on your group set. So, you're going to be limited to SRAM NX. You can put a GX shifter. You can put the X01 shifter. You could put the XX1. However, you'll be running on that cassette. You can change the chain, but you'll be running on that cassette. Because... This bike don't run the through axle. It doesn't run the 142 through axle. It don't run the 148 mil through axle. It don't run the 150. It don't run the 157. This is just 135 quick release. So the SRAM NX is the only one cassette what's going to fit because it's running on the Shimano Hyperglide drive body. Now, with certain manufacturers like um, Shimano, on their website they will tell you what cranks is suitable for what bottom bracket. They will tell you. So when it comes to Shimano, always make sure you go on Shimano's website and go into the documents because they will, they will tell you carefully which is compatible, which is not. You want to go out and buy yourself an XTR and you're thinking, oh, 
it will fit on my bike what's 135 you buy the cranks and you got yourself issues so always read the documents read the documents on all these things read the SRAM document read the Shimano document just read the documents if you need help they got all the information that was needed and it will help you out a lot so on the next topic is this because this is a one and a qu quarter or what we know as 1.125 or what we all know as 118 okay this bike here is not tapered headset it's not tapered at all so one thing you must understand is 118 top and bottom this uses straight sterile not tapered straight sterile 118 top and bottom so this takes the um zero stack 44 um um headset so zs44 what I means zero stack 44 118 straight sterile no tapered the only problem with this if you're looking to get yourself some for forks you have forks like the um you have the Rockshot Recons, TK. You got the Coil version of it. There's a Solar Air version of it. But I know on their website, the TK one is now is the Coil one, the newer one. But the older one still has the Solar Air. Then you have um, the Recon RLs, what's the Solar Air version? So they have that what will fit on this bike. You also have the the you also got the you also got the um, the Rockshot Judies what they have that will fit on here. You can even get um, pop lock, or you can just have the normal um, knobs at the bottom that you turn. But depending if you're the type of person who wants to be able to go from lockout. To low compression or just lock out and just have the forces working. It depending if you're on if you're on the on the trail or you're riding, you just want instant change. Then you go for pop lock. If you're a person who will stop and get off the bike and just chewing it and get back on the bike, then you don't need to worry about the pop lock stuff. It's only if you need to go from lock out to making the suspension work. So. The next fork that you can get on there is called the um, Manitou Marcos. They are one one eighth that will fit on here. Another fork that will go into it is the is the Fox is the is the Fox Thirty Floats. They have the one. They have a basic one. What will cost you around? You're looking at the price of round. When I last checked, around seven hundred thirty pound, I probably say between six hundred eighty to seven hundred thirty pound, you got yourself the Fox thirty two floats, what is straight stereo that will fit onto this. So Fox will have the most expensive one that will fit onto this. So if you're a person who love Fox, then that's the fork that's for you. If you like rock shocks, then you go for Judy's recons. The only one will be available. If you're a person who's into Manitors, then the Marco is the one we're going to hear. So, unfortunately, the company Mozochi is not how they used to be back in the day. Back in the day, when Mo when Mozochi was out there with the forks, you can get any fork you want. But eventually, Mozochi eventually died out and um, another company bought them out. I think it was, who bought them out? I can't remember who bought them out. I'm not sure was it Fox or someone else, but someone else bought them out. So another company bought out um, Mozochi. But Mozochi, if this was back in the day with Mozochi, you could easily get forks for this. Easily, easily get forks. Mozochi would be the number one company I would have went through because I knew if I went to them, I would always be able to get forks. 
but you're only left with those um, options. So, going with the forks again, you have the Recons, the Judies, 118 Solar Air that they do that will fit the front. The Manitor, Marcos, you have the. Um, you got the Fox Shock um, 32 floats that will fit onto it. So. That will work on it. Your headset is 118, what takes is ZS44 or Zero Stack 44. This takes um, 100mm axle and it's 9mm dropout. On this specialised rock hopper sport, it's 73mm from that end here to that end over here. Using a double on bracket, that's the that's the um the preload over there that's the lock preload lock ring that i use to tighten against the bearing to kind of stop the little play um got the cranks over here this crank here all you need is an eight mil if this ever comes loose where well, it shouldn't because you can actually see the lock tighten here just to keep the thing nice and tight if this ever comes loose you need those, um, they're like, um, I think those called, those prongs, I think the tool is called prongs, or you can see if you can get like a, like a circlip pliers in here, see, you see if you can get a circlip to work in there, if the circlip don't work then you can definitely need the, um, that tool from park tool, that the, those, 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 those prongs what goes in here. And you just tighten it up and you're good. This serves as an extractor. You put 8mm in here. You turn it. And the whole cranks come off. You pull this in. It comes off. Just remember the back end. Is 135. So. You're going to be limited with your wheels. What you can put onto it. Now. That brake over there. Because this is a large frame. The maximum you can hold up onto it is 180mm rotor. So what you do, on the front you see here, is also this one's really at 180 the back is at 160 That mount that you see over here, that mount over there that you see over there, that mount there, that same front mount is the mount that will go onto the back. So you put that mount at the back and that will make it 180 and you can have 180 mil at the back if you want to. So this is just um, a video talking about solving my Shramanix Evil gearing situation. And also just added extra information in case you're considering a bike based on old specifications. What you should look out for. But I may do another video. In case this video is too long, people may not watch it to the end. I'll just upload another video talking about the bike specifications for what people should look out for when they're about to buy a new bike in this day and age. So, hope you liked the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it the thumbs down. Peace out, guys. Keep riding. Keep safe, enjoy, and have that love within you. Peace out.